Hong Kong-based crypto exchange, Crypto.com, is one of the top 25 biggest exchanges in the world in terms of trading activity. You may have uh, handling about 330 million in volume a day. Perhaps uh, our next guest will have an opinion on it. Joining us now to discuss is Crypto.com CEO, Chris Marslek. Welcome to the show, Chris. So you're watching all Thanks this news out of China. Yeah, great to have you. You're watching all this news out of China, crypto exchanges closing down there. That's not affecting you. Or how do you see the, you know, the fallout out of that from your perspective? I mean, we've, uh, we have an approach which has been clear for a couple of years now. This is going to be a fully regulated industry, right? So we're in the business of securing uh, licenses everywhere around the world um, to build a solid foundation for the business. Uh, we do not serve customers from China, so this uh, type of news doesn't affect us. And frankly speaking, it doesn't even affect the market all that much anymore because this is, by my count, I think the seventh time China has banned Bitcoin and crypto. So the, the more frequently you do it, the less impact it has. I think cryptocurrency has, has, has gotten to the size as an industry that it's just impossible to just kill by governments. But it is going to be regulated. I, you know, we've, we've been talking about China a lot on the show, and I generally agree with you that this just isn't the first time and the market has bounced back from China cracking down. So I think you're right about that. But in terms of the shift in mining, this definitely is a pretty big shift, right? Most industry watchers think that, you know, mining is actually shifting from China to other parts of the world. And what do you think the impact of that will be on the industry? Well, the, the people who are in the mining business, they've been doing this for many years and, and successfully, right? So uh, they do need to migrate this, these businesses um, overseas, and many of the large uh, miners are already in the process of doing so. So there may be some, you know, uh, the hash rate may be affected short term, but uh, they're just going to move to other places. And uh, I think this is actually an opportunity for Bitcoin. And there was this, for many years, there was this narrative that you know, all the mining is centralized in China and it's such a bad thing, right? So now it's not going to be uh, in China. I think Bitcoin's going to do fantastically well without it. Hey, Chris, um, you know, while we're, we're talking about China, one, one of the big vehicles that people have there to get into crypto is Tether, but you guys have a deal with USDC. Um, can you explain, first of all, what is that deal? And uh, is it a vote of confidence in USDC? Um, or is it uh, more a vote against the confidence in Tether? First of all, I think that the team at Circle has done a tremendous job refocusing the business in the last couple of years, and they've been very successful with USDC. And they're very well known for uh, taking a regulated approach to, to stable coins. Uh, it's all very transparent and safe. And, um, we're excited to be working with them on a number of projects. One of them we just launched this week where we enable users from 30 countries to wire uh, US dollars to Circle and they get uh, USDC credited uh, in some cases within minutes uh, to uh, on their Crypto.com app or Crypto.com exchange. Uh, but, but in terms of uh, USDC, are, are, do you, well, a couple of things. I mean, they, there has been some uh, the, you know, some of their, their latest attestations haven't appeared on the site. I think there were some issues with that. But uh, getting back to this issue with Tether, are, are you concerned in any way about it? Uh, I think Tether was a, uh, could have been perceived as, an, as a broader issue for the entire industry a couple of years ago. But right now you've got so many stablecoin alternatives, USDC being one that uh, I think is doing exceptionally well. Uh, that just doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, move, switching topics, as crypto infrastructure grows, so too does the marketing budgets, it seems, of many exchanges. For instance, crypto exchange FTX has been footing sponsorship deals with Major League Baseball, naming rights to the arena where the Miami Heat play. Coinbase factored in spending up to 15% of annual net revenue on sales and marketing in their Q1 earnings report. So you guys aren't going to be left out. Uh, you, you're partnering with Formula One to have a trackside presence at every race for the remainder of the season. Uh, what do you say about these crypto exchanges expanding their marketing, their sales, and, and your partnership with Formula One, Formula One in that context? We are thrilled to, to partner with F1. You know, it's a global sport, and uh, we're going to be very prominently visible at um, and next to some of, some of the world's most iconic brands. So it's a global partner status, and there's only six other companies that have 
this cryptocurrency partnership for us. Um, and I think there is a, a huge overlap in terms of uh, you know the audience that is you know, tech savvy and interested in um, in uh, in crypto and in and in Formula One. So it was a natural partnership, and we're coming up with super creative ways of of um, you know, putting crypto for them center as a part of it. So you will see a you know, very interesting uh, new format for Formula One as a sport coming soon, uh, presented by Crypto.com and whatnot. This is actually not the first sports deal. We are also sponsors of the Aston Martin Formula One team. Um, we are supporting uh, Montreal Canadiens, who just got into the Stanley Cup final. Uh, we've done a deal with uh, Serie A, the Italian Football League. So, and there is uh, quite a number of these uh, in the pipeline. And, for us, it's a part of a broader strategy as a company. Our mission is to drive uh, the world's transition to crypto, taking it mainstream, cryptocurrency in every wallet. We think we have a very um, powerful product, better than today's uh, market leaders, and it's time to let everybody know. Uh, and we are committed to, we just crossed 10 million user mark in Q1. We continue to grow very strongly in Q2. We're committed to hitting 100 million users uh, in the next two years. So obviously, you need to amp it up a little bit and make sure that, uh, that, that, that uh, the brand is visible. So Chris, along those lines, you, you mentioned the Habs sponsorship, the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, you, you know, you can't watch a Canadiens game now without seeing your logo on, on, the, on the ice there at Centre Bell. So you bought it, you, you got that sponsorship back in March when the Habs weren't exactly, uh, you know, considered uh, Stanley Cup bound. Uh, now they're in the finals. So uh, if you don't mind me asking, uh, how much did you guys pay for it, and, and was it a real steal? Well, I, uh, we don't talk about numbers and, you know, for, for any of our deals. Um, uh, I think we were very happy with how it turned out. And, but, you know, we have um, a few more of, of these deals in the pipeline where we're also, like, thinking about uh, how the teams are going to do in the future. And in certain... Um, in certain uh, circumstances, you know, you take into account kind of arbitrage value, the present uh, performance versus potential future performance. So, um, yeah, we're very happy with the did, outcome, did, and we're very happy did, with how they're doing. Did it come with ticket? Did it come with the owner's box? Do you have extra tickets? <laughs> Just asking extra for tickets. Uh, something we let, let's let's take it offline on Wait, the extra tickets. And that yeah. Yeah. Work yeah. something out. Wait. <laughs> Evaluating on performance, you mean on the Habs performance or <laughs> just on the oh, I'm talking team? about in, 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 gen, in, in general uh, when you're looking at you know, different teams, right? You need to look at things like that. Okay. Uh, you uh, might want to consider where, where the Leafs, today? Chris. The Toronto Leafs where are, are they going are, to be today? Here pretty. No, oh, right, no, right, no right. They're, they're, he's I, fine I think... with the Habs. He's fine. Oh, right. Guys, I know well, this I, is very controversial. I, uh, going after individual okay, teams is... sometimes can be controversial. <laughs> Um, yes. But uh, that's one All of the reasons right. why we sponsored F1 the entire no, week. Go, Leafs, go. 